Yeah. You looked a little different. Yeah. I should just say this. I just should say this for the sake of argument. We're talking about this downstairs. Yeah. Two years ago, I gained a whole bunch of weight. Okay. Gained yeah. would be. Of the chicken nuggets. No, no, not the chicken oh. nuggets. No, it was more like steaks and scotch, really. Um, it was. Um, I gained almost 30 kilos. Yeah. Just because I, you know, I moved from New York City to Los Angeles, <laughs> and I stopped walking. You know. Okay. Yeah. And you start driving your car, and you just stop walking. Okay, so I gained 60 pounds. Okay, everybody does it. Yeah. I'm no different. Break me. Do I not bleed? But you got rid of it. So. I got rid of it. <laughs> now, what, what you need to know is because I've gotten many letters and people who are very concerned, yeah. they come up to me and they go, Joe, you know, and I got this letter. I kid you not, I'm, I'm the Blackberry. And I, and I got this letter, very nicely worded email from a guy in, in America who has been following my career for 20 years, has met me on several occasions. I know who, I know who he is. And he said, I never thought in the 20 years I've been following that I ever would see the day <laughs> where I'd wake up and I'd see a picture of you. And, you know, I've always feared this for you, that you'd start taking drugs. <laughs> and I said, I said, what are you talking about drugs? I've never taken a drug in my life. And, and it was like, he goes on to write, like, it's like you've lost all this weight so fast. You know, it's got to be cocaine or crap. And I'm like, I'm like, no, dude, it's it's a green apple as opposed to a hamburger. That's the difference. Yes, sir. It's as simple as that. It's really it's a lifestyle change. Yeah. So arguably, I look thinner, what do you think? but I'm healthier because I eat healthy. Right. Well, it's I'll a lifestyle you. change. No more chicken McNuggets for me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the zip. You're very welcome. Thanks. Thanks. Already been asked here, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I want to. Uh, as some more. You talked about uh, the situation in the U.S. about the young kids needing to learn the rules. Um, a couple of years ago, we talked with you about that in, in, in your tour bus at the Tegman Festival. Is the situation already changed? Has it, uh, your work uh, had some results already? Well, I mean, I think it's yielding some results. I mean, is it is it a monumental shift in the Blues' fortune? No. But um, I will say, it is yielding some results because I noticed, like, at least in my own shows, and I can only gauge it from my own shows because I don't got, to, I don't see what happens in other people's gigs. Um, I noticed that even in Europe, there are a lot of younger kids coming. You know, there are kids that are 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 that before two years ago when we talked didn't have that happen. There's girls at the gigs. Oh my God, there's girls at the gigs. You know. Um, and that's the kind of thing it's like so yeah I mean at least at least in my little world um, it's it's been working um, I don't know in the grand scheme of things um, <clears throat> how much of an impact I've had but you can't really you can't really quantify that that way you really want to you know you, you do it for the greater good and <clears throat> hopefully you know 20 years from now I can sit back and go okay well you know I did you know 7,000 gigs and 7,000 blues in the schools and um, you you go okay, I, it it had somewhat of an impact and and t turned at least a small portion of the kids onto a music that maybe they wouldn't have gravitated to otherwise. So I mean, to me, it's like that's in the, the most important thing. It's like you know that means I've done my 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 thing for crown and country. It starts with a scene. It starts with a country, or it starts with a state or a city. You know. And it starts with like you know a couple of bands doing well, getting the youth excited, and then all of a sudden there's a movement, and then it's like, and then there's other bands that will follow that because you know everybody's getting popular, and then you start with the, there's a movement, there's a um, there's a there's a general excitement again about blues, you know, which is that's great, and it start has to start somewhere. My my thing is more of, of going. You know, in America, blues represents 1% of music sales, not exactly titanic numbers, you know. So to me, it's like, how do you go, how does a music that influenced every other style of music that's currently on the charts, only 1%. So you don't want it to become like a historical relic. You want it to become a, a you want it to become a, um, a, a thing where, you know, blues is relevant again, and it's energetic and it's exciting to listen to. And I think <clears throat> a lot of that has to do with, you know, that you have to kind of put that squarely on the artists, you know, um, who play the music. You know, that's, it's their responsibility to, to make exciting records that, that not only that their own fans and fan base that they already have will buy, but 
trying to actually break out and get a new, you know, some more people involved in this thing. So I mean, it's it, it, it's twofold. I think the, the artists share some responsibility, and you know, ultimately, I think um, some of the some of the you know MTVs and and VH1 <coughs> share a little bit of responsibility. Going, hey, listen, you know, it can't all be just about dollars and cents and what's hot. You know, there has to be you know, you're call yourself a music channel and be a music channel. So. Um. <coughs> Blues is more like playing music. It's it's also a feeling. Um, we sometimes ask the question: Do you have to <coughs> pick cotton to play the blues? Um, I never pick cotton. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I don't know. It's like it depends on who you ask. You know, I play English blues, mm -hmm. and my my heroes were John Mayall and the Blues Breakers. My heroes were were you know Cream and and Paul Kossoff and Free and Jeff Beck group. So um, I learned from the guys who learned from the guys, yeah. who learned from the guys who pick cotton, you yeah. know. And and like to me, like that, that to me is more of a, you know, I, I don't know. I think you know ultimately, I've seen guys who worked in a factory play most soulful things, you know. But I also seen guys born with ten million dollars in a trust fund play very soulful things. Yeah. You know, it's like it doesn't. You don't have to be downtrodden nor do you have to be wealthy, you just have to be you and be able to channel your emotion and your feelings and be able to convey that to others. It's very hard to go from this is how I feel inside to taking a guitar and an amp and going, I'm making everybody in this room feel the same way I'm feeling. Okay. Um, you told a beautiful story about B.B. King and you <coughs> his protege yeah. at the age of 12. Uh, you have your protégés already yourself? Um, you know, I have a few kids that I, I help, and um, you know, uh, there's this little kid from Lafayette, Indiana, named L.D. Miller, who I think is the best harmonica player. He's like 14, and um, you know, I help him out as much as I can. Um, you know, these couple of kids from England that that you know they're 20 years old, and I call them kids because because I I can because I'm 31 now and have gray hair, you know. But uh, uh, now it's um, there's a lot of kids. I I try to help everybody, you know, because again. You know, the, the guy you're looking at is 90% luck, 10% talent, you know, and that's ultimately, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, people go, well, you know, it's like you've accomplished a lot, and I have. I've been extraordinarily lucky, and I've been extraordinarily lucky, but I've also had the help and support of some extraordinary people along the way, which if, if I didn't have any, any one of you take any, it's like a very, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a, you're building a pyramid out of dominoes. You take one domino out. The entire thing falls. I'm not, you know, it's that's kind of like me in a nutshell. Okay, uh, half an hour ago we were in a, in a uh, you had an audience about uh, 100, 150 mm -hmm. kids. When they come home and go behind a uh, personal computer and say, let's download some music from both mm -hmm. Joe Bonamassa, what do you think about downloading music? I think it's great. I mean, a, any way to get the music out there, I mean, we as artists cannot sit there and, on our high hogs and go, well, we're going to sell records and sit at home and make money. It's just not going to happen anymore. People, people will download your music. Fine. So what do you what do you do? We're all capital. You know, have to have to make money and pay the light bill. Um, so I think ultimately, you know, you have to. It boils down to the thing. Well, it becomes a a live show thing. Like we have a show in Cologne tonight. You know, um, you know, and that's the only way I can afford to come to you know Andre School today is because we have a show in Cologne, you know, because that pays the band and that pays the hotels and that pays the, <coughs> you know, that pays, you know, the cost of having 10 people out here. Um, so downloading music doesn't bother me. I mean, I think I've had more people come to my shows and say they bought and tickets because they saw me on YouTube or they saw they, they, they illegally downloaded or shared my album. I don't care. I mean, it's like if you, you have, you know, to me, it's like, as long as they come to the shows, and that, that's the biggest thing, and that's why I let people videotape the shows, and that's why I let people you know, record the shows or take pictures, because ultimately, you know, today is just a, today is just a, a you know, a, a day like any, and like any other day, and it's, it's just a moment in time. Tomorrow will be different, you know. I'll weigh, I'll weigh, you know, hopefully a pound lighter tomorrow, but, you know, and I'll look different, my hair will grow, or I'll get my hair cut, you know, it's like, so it's like today is today and tomorrow is tomorrow. It's like so if you know if you're constantly reinventing yourself every day, you know you don't have to do that. But I'm just saying you know every day is a little bit different. So that's why I let people download the music. I don't care, and I let people take the shows. And today is Cologne this evening, and tomorrow is Moscow. And yeah. This, and this was Winterberg. Don't remind me. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.